Hello there folks and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. In fact, welcome to a bathroom in my house because today I'm going to be doing a video on wet shaving. Now a few weeks ago I did a video where I wet shaved up in the woods and I got quite a lot of comments from people asking about wet shaving and asking me to do a bit of a tutorial on wet shaving. Now I've wet shaved for around about 10 years, off and on, tend to go through phases of it, you know, as I uh, waver between using a safety razor and then using one of these things. And uh, fortunately, I'm now back on the safety razor world. So I'd like to, first of all, talk to you about the benefits of using a safety razor and why you should consider using one as well. What do I mean by a safety razor for a start? Well, this is a safety razor. So a safety razor is a double-edged razor, is another term which people use for it. And it's called that because if one looks inside, I hope, let's see if we can get a good image of that. Inside this safety razor is this little fella here, and that is of course a razor blade. And that fits inside the safety razor, where as you can see, hopefully that goes in there, and that's what we're gonna shave with today. So what's the benefit of one of these over one of these. Why would I prefer one to the other? Because these are what everybody tends to use in, in the UK, in North America, because of the advertising marketing which we've been exposed to. So why are they better? Well, for a start, you get a better shave with one of these. Um, although, you know, the cartridge razors are reputed to be good for sensitive skin and things like that, when you think about it, let's have a look, there are Ooh, I don't know how many blades on this one, but quite a few blades on that one. Five, six blades with some of the razors these days. So you've got six pieces of stainless steel, razor sharp, being drawn across your face. That can cause to irritation. It can enhance sort of uh, dryness of the skin. It can cause ingrowing hair because sometimes with these blades, they draw the hair out from the skin and cut it off below the level of the skin itself. It gives you a wonderful smooth shave, but of course, when the hair starts to grow, it can, you know, it can cause ingrowing hairs and then you get pimples and pustules on your face and it's uh, counterproductive. One of these, it's a single blade. It cuts cleanly, sharply, and effectively. One of the other big advantages over one of these is the cost. A cartridge razor, uh, the blades are ferociously expensive. When it comes to um, a safety razor, you buy them in, in simple packs, just like this. This is what I'm using today, Feathers Razor Blade. There are many different brands which people would have a preference to, uh, but they're modestly expensive, just a couple of pence, you know, in essence, per blade. One blade is good for about five shaves. For me personally, everybody will find it somewhat different, depending on the growth of your beard and, you know, the, uh, the sort of the tensile strength of your hair as well, because the blade's doing a lot more work, but uh, everybody finds their own level, but certainly, it's three, four, five cuts per razor blade. Much, much cheaper in the long run, it's fair to say. One of the other things I like about using a double-edged razor is it's actually quite enjoyable to shave with. You know, I think of it as a, a regime in the morning. You know, I, I prepare my face, I cut my, my beard off using the razor, and then I in, really enjoy using balms and aftershaves afterwards because it gives you a really uh, invigorating feeling for the day, I think, personally. And it sets you up for a day f smelling fresh. And it's also really good for your skin. If you imagine, you know, you're exfoliating, applying shaving cream, things like that. And, uh, you know, and you're using a razor in itself is quite exfoliating. It's not damaging like the multiple bladed cartridge razors. The single razor here, you know, it's a simple clean cut. It exfoliates the skin at the same time as, of course, uh, removing the beard from your face. So it's, you know, a lot cheaper. It's a better cut. It's better for your skin. It's an invigorating regime every day. And it's more chap. You know, this guide, this, this channel is called the Chaps Guide. And it's one of those skills and techniques that you need to form throughout your life if you can truly call yourself a chap and that's using a double-edged razor, as your grandfather, as your father uh, did. I remember, you know, looking up to my dad when he was shaving with one of these when I was a young whippersnapper and looking forward to the day that I would use one. So, you know, that's some of the advantages. So what do you need? What is the equipment which is required when it comes to starting off wet shaving? It's not expensive and there's not a lot. So let's just run through it. First of all, you need a razor. 
And this trap I have here is a very simple, and in fact, if I just, excuse me for a moment, just look down to my cabinet there. This is exactly the razor that I'm using. It's a Wilkinson Swords, um, very much the you know, double-edged entry-level model. I bought this last week, because actually I have a, a couple of other double-edged razors. One is on long-term loan to my dad at the moment, so he's using it, a Parker. Um, I've got a couple of travel ones, but I wanted a nice entry-level razor to use. God, here's a rain banging against the window. A nice entry-level razor to use in this presentation today. So I thought I'd buy one, the sort of one which you, as a new wet shaver, might be interested in purchasing. I went onto Amazon and I paid 10 British pounds for this Wilkinson Sword double-edged razor. Now this is one which has a butterfly opening, twist to open at the top. The razor is placed inside, nice and easy to use. That's the first thing you need, 10 pounds. In fact, this one came with a, a little box of five Wilkinson Swords razor blades in it as well. So you've got everything you need. So once you've got the razor, then you, you need a blade. So the blades, as I've already discussed, relatively inexpensive. I'm using Feathers Blade today. You'll find that if you get into double-edged shaving, there are all different types. Some are very sharp, feathers are very sharp. There are others which are less uh, aggressive, more mild, but I'm using a Feathers today. So that's what I use. Uh, and they're not expensive, can be purchased anywhere in hundreds, in tens, in fives, depending on what you want. So you've got, you've got the cutting implement there, you've got the steel. The other thing you need is shaving cream or soap or foam. Most people uh, who shave wet will use a aerosol can foam. I wouldn't recommend that at all. For me, one of the absolute pleasures of shaving daily, or however often you need to shave, uh, with a double-edged razor, a safety razor, is using soap or, or cream because the process of building up a lather really brings the, the sense into the whole experience. And as you know, a sensory experience is an experience enjoyed. So I like to use various different soaps. And if you get into shaving regularly, you'll find yourself buying different uh, soaps, different creams, and you change them in rotation, you know, depending on your mood um, and what you want to do. So that is the essence of it. All you need is that. Now you don't need a brush. I am so I reach over to pick my brush up. I'm going to be using a brush today uh, because I use a brush to apply the cream, the soap to my face. There are many, many different types of brush you can uh, purchase. This is actually a badger hair brush, which I've bought from Taylor's of Old Bond Street, which is a really reputable heritage um, a company which sells pretty much everything anybody could ever need for shaving uh, in London. And I've been to the shop many, many times. It's always a pilgrimage of mine when I visit the capital city here in the UK. I bought this a number of years ago. This is made of badger. Now badger is probably one of the better uh, materials for brushes to be made of because the, the bristles um, absorbed, uh, absorb moisture and it, it whips up a great lather. You don't need to spend big money. This probably cost about 30 quid, I think, 30 pounds. You don't need to spend money like that. You can spend a fiver, you can spend six, seven pounds in your local supermarket because a brush is a brush to a degree. It's only when you get more involved in it that you might be interested in going badger, boar, horsehair brushes even. I understand are available today. I've never owned one, but I, I know they are available. So when you've got your soap, and your brush, what you'll need is something to whip the lather up in. Personally, I use a simple um, enamel bowl. I've had that for years and years. It's, uh, it's nothing on the inside. Some of them you'll find have ridges, these specialist shaving bowls. Personally, simple, you know, if, if you're starting off, go and get a cereal bowl from the kitchen. That is all that you need. You've got your bowl and you're on your way. A few little tips I use. Um, so as I said, when you're using the razor, you get, I get about five shaves per razor out of a blade. I don't necessarily shave every day in sequence, so I sometimes forget how many cuts I've done with the razor. And a little technique I have, I have a dice here, a normal dice from a game, surplus to one of my son's games. And I keep this in the bowl, simple like that in the bowl next to my razor. And when I've had a shave, so today, for instance, when I picked my razor up, it was showing the number two, which told me that I've used that blade on two previous occasions. When I finish today, I'll move it over to number three. So the next time I come back, I've got two uh, shaves left. When I get to the six, it's time to change the blade. Simple as that. Nice, easy way of keeping track of how many shaves you've had. And one final little tip, 
styptic pencil. Now a styptic pencil is, is basically a little block of uh, aluminium sulphate and aluminium sulphate um, really uh, causes congealing of the skin, uh, of blood rather. So if you cut yourself, that back in the drawer, if you cut yourself when you're shaving, you, people do get a nick when they're shaving, a uh, little bit of the styptic pencil rubbed against the cut will cause that cut to cease bleeding immediately, help the congealment of the blood, and uh, you know, within a minute or two, you can rub it off, because it leaves a, a white residue, rub it off, and there's no, no evidence that you've cut yourself at all. So very useful uh, thing to have in the drawer. Sometimes you cut yourself and you need to turn to it. Hopefully, we won't do that today. So that's pretty much all that you need. When you come to the end of your shave, you might want to use aftershave or balm, but we'll talk about that when we get to the end. So I'm just going to crack on and do the shave. So uh, first of all, you need to prepare your face, your beard, because you know this is a bit of a regime. It sounds long-winded, and if you think, oh Christ, I'm never going to do this every day, but actually this is automatic, quickly done, takes minutes. The more you uh, perfect your own regime, the quicker you get at doing this. So to prepare your face is simple. Um, best thing to do, take a shower, because the process of uh, getting into that hot water will soften your face, soften the bristles, um, and then when it comes to the shaving, it's easier to get them you know, removed from, from the skin, the, the bristles. So nice, have a shower. If you can't have a shower, next best thing, get yourself a, uh, a towel, a wet towel, stick it in the microwave for a few minutes, hold it against your face, and that will essentially do the same thing as having a shower. The idea is to warm the face up, get those bristles softened, ready to be cut. I've got no time for that today, and I don't ordinarily do either of those things necessarily in the morning when I'm shaving at 6 a.m. So all I'm gonna do today is to wet my face. And I'm just gonna put my hands, I've got some water here in front of me, hot water, warm water, doesn't have to be boiling in any way. And I just wet my face because the process of wetting my face lubricates the face and it makes it the whole process of shaving a whole lot easier. Now my brush, um, I'm just gonna dampen down my brush. I'm gonna get my shaving soap. I haven't got much soap left in this one actually. It's one of my favorites. It's a lovely, um, this, uh, what am I using here today? I am using Citrus Kiss Shaving Cream, which is by a company called Executive Shaving, Scottish company, and uh, they make this fantastically um, lemony flavored um, shaving cream, which I have to say, the, the scents coming off it are just lemon lemon. It's uh, deliciously lemon, to be perfectly honest. It's something like you feel like you could eat. And all you can see me doing, can't quite see me doing it, but I'm just, I've got a little bit of that shaving cream on the end of my brush, dampened brush, I'm, and I'm using that inside the bowl to whip up a lather. And in no time at all, a lather has been whipped up. And all I'm gonna do, and you'll excuse me if I sometimes look down because my main mirror is there. I appreciate the cameras up here but I'm looking down at my mirror and all I'm doing is applying that lather, sometimes a little bit more water sometimes, and I'm applying it to my face. Now the shaving soap, cream, whatever you want to call it, uh, it performs a fabulous function for us today when we're wet shaving, it protects the face. It lubricates the, the blade when we're cutting our face, cutting our, our beard rather, hope we're not gonna cut our face. And uh, all I've done there, as you can see, is apply that shaving cream all over the face, all over the bristles, and this is really enjoyable. I have to say there's pleasure in this. So applying this beautiful smelling um, material to your face, uh, and it's, you know, you don't have to be too uh, careful with it all, because you can tidy it all up afterwards, clear the lips. Um, so now, that's it. I have now applied everything I need to my face. I'm ready to crack on with the shave. I've got my razor here. I'm just gonna dampen my razor in the water just to warm it up a little bit, because I've got warm water here, and steel performs better when it's a bit warm, in my opinion. So I'm just sticking it in there, and now I'm just gonna apply the blade to my face, and as you can see, in downward motions, I am just shaving my skin. I'm holding the blade at approximately 30 degrees to my face, and all I'm doing is drawing the blade across my face and allowing it to cut the beard. Now, when I say drawing the blade, I'm applying virtually no pressure to that blade at all. It's a very different experience to shaving with a cartridge razor, because you find on a cartridge razor, you need to apply downward pressure to push those blades into the skin. When we're using a safety razor, 
That's not necessary. In fact, all you need to do, and if you've got quite a hefty uh, razor like this, which is about 80 grams, by the way, this Wilkinson's Swords uh, entry level one, I'm just using the weight of the razor, pull down or pull the razor across my face, and that is doing the cutting for me. I'm hardly putting any pressure on the razor itself. I am just guiding it and allowing gravity to pull it across my face. Now, in areas like under the nose, you've got to be a little bit more careful because, uh, you know, I just get the razor on its edge and get into those little spaces where you can't quite fit. So I've done the top half of my face. Now, everybody will find they shave in a different way. You'll shave uh, first pass, down against the grain, sometimes up the grain. Everybody, you will find the nuances of your beard and how your whiskers grow. For me, I shave the top half of my face down, which is necessarily with the grain, and now I shave under the chin, upwards against the grain. And you can probably hear the bristles being cut. And for me, this works quite well. Now, some people might choose to shave down first, and, and then on the second pass, and we'll talk about what first and second passes are in a moment, but uh, they might shave in the other direction. For me, I shave upwards. And as you can see, I'm pulling my face taut so that the skin is taut, as I say, so that I can get at those bristles in the hard to reach areas, get the razor into it, cut them off the face. And it is, I had uh, two and a half days of growth there on the face. So it's, been, it's about lunchtime uh, on, I think it's a Thursday. So I hadn't shaved since Tuesday morning. So I've got a fair bit of growth there. I grow, you know, a noticeable beard after say 24 hours. So uh, for me, it's uh, a pleasure to shave this off. And as you see, it's coming off nicely. When I'm shaving upwards against the grain under my chin, I'm again, you know, just literally steering that blade. I'm not pushing down. I'm not forcing the blade against my skin. The blade is doing the work for me. Around the chin area, you know, often you find uh, your, your, your bristles um, difficult to shave in this area because they're coming from all different directions. Uh, so you just go around it and you, there you go, up under the bottom lip. Always be careful around the lips. They're very um, blood heavy parts of the body. So if you nick the edge of your lip, you won't believe the amount of blood you'll get coming out of it. You know, it's a real eye opener. Uh, not really painful, it's not a concern, but you know, it's just, it always bleeds quite heavily. That was my first pass. So as you can see, I've had a shave now, and I have to say it feels pretty smooth anyway. All I'm gonna do is, this is now called the second pass. I'm gonna get my same brush, same lather, and I'm gonna re-lather the skin again. And uh, I'm not gonna harbor you know, any great efforts here. I'm just gonna quickly lather over it again because this, this second pass is sometimes where you get that exceptionally close shave. And uh, you know, just gonna crack on with it here. Now some mornings, I don't always do a second pass. I have to admit, I'll do the first pass and that'll be adequate for, for the day that I've got planned ahead of me. Um, if I don't, you know, particularly want to spend 10 minutes uh, shaving. When you do your second pass, whatever direction you shaved in on your skin, it's often an idea that people will shave in an alternative direction just to get at any bristles which are still sticking out that you may have missed. So if you recall on the top half of my face, I shaved downwards. So on this occasion, I'm just gonna shave sideways. And I can, I can hear the blade actually doing its work. So it's working. Remember with a double-edged razor, you've got shave on one side, so you get all the, the foam and the bristles on there, and you just need to flip it over. So you don't have to keep putting your hand back and forth into the sink and wiping off that blade. So there we go. I'm using, as you can see, I'm generally only running the blade over my skin once or twice in one direction. Unlike, if you imagine I was using a cartridge razor, five blades, maybe six blades in some cases, repeatedly over and over again. There we go. So just tidying up the areas that I missed the first time. Now under the skin, under the chin rather, I'm just gonna go over it, making sure 
and as I'm just covering my pulling my skin toward to get at those areas making sure that uh, there is nothing which missed on the first pass there we go really getting it all off there nice and again just pull the skin taut to get at the hard to reach areas there we go that's it and I have to say the face is feeling good tidy it around the chin again now as I say you may find that you've nicked yourself if you've got any little imperfections on the skin like a pimple that catches your razor I know I had a little pimple here, a little bit of blood there right now, nothing at all to worry about. So there we go. That is two passes with a double edged razor. Just get my, my towel here, wipe the skin off. Ah. And now I'm feeling good. The skin feels fabulous. Skin feels fabulous. And uh, you know, that is it, two passes. Now, it depends on your beard. If you're somebody who you know, grows really wiry black hair, um, you may want to do three passes, you know, shaving in various different directions to make sure you get rid of all those bristles. I've done two today. Sometimes I only do one. Depends on my mood. Depends on what I've got on that day. Depends on how closely I want to be shaved. But lovely two passes and the skin feels wonderful. Now, one of the great joys of shaving wet is that after you've had that shave, then comes the pleasure of applying some products to make you uh, your skin feel good uh, and to protect your skin. Because you know, even though we've used the double-edged razor, we have at the end of the day drawn a razor blade over the skin, and it's going to have an impact on your skin. So on, you get to use aftershaves. You can use um, you know various witch hazels or whatever is your personal preference. Whatever works for you. I have curated a fairly large collection of aftershaves over the years, different fragrances, uh, and you know it's a minefield of a hobby within itself, aftershaves, fragrances, eau de colognes, things like that. Today I'm going to be using a uh, eau de cologne, uh, and this is a Agua Colonia Concentrada, which is a lovely citrus flavoured uh, cologne, relatively inexpensive, it's a big 300 milliliter bottle, it cost, I think, 20 quid, something like that, 20 pounds. Uh, and the reason I've chosen this one today is because, as I said, I used uh, Citrus Kiss Shaving Foam at the, um, the, the shaving foam stage, soap phase. This is another very citrusy, Mediterranean-smelling uh, fragrance uh, product, and I'm going to apply that onto the skin. Good dash of that. And uh, let's have a go. Ah, oh yeah, that's it. Lovely summer smell. Now, the face is zinging at the moment because I've just shaved, got a few little nicks in the face, nothing nothing at all to speak of, probably not even visible to you on camera. Uh, but by applying that cologne, uh, it closes up those nicks. Um, you can use after, you know, what's the difference in colognes and aftershaves? They've all got their sort of various things. Aftershaves generally have some form of um, astringent in them. So, you know, your alcohol-based uh, ones, your non-alcohol-based ones, you can, you can go on that journey yourselves, pick the fragrance that you like, find out what works for your skin. I just use a cologne, which gives a lovely fragrance and it gives a lovely zing to your skin after, I've used, after you've used um, the blade. Then I like to finish up with a balm. And I use all different types of balms. Um, I'm a big fan of, you know, very inexpensive ones. You don't have to spend big money on a balm. But today I'm going to use a Bart's Aftershave Balm. Now, I talked about this one the other day, actually, and I've been using it uh, very regularly since I featured it in a recent video. Uh, and I love it, and I absolutely adore its lime flavour, which is totally invigorating, freshening. You know, you feel great after you've used it. Uh, and this is a lime flavour. So, and it's, you know, kind of... In, in tune with what I've used today. I've used um, a lime flavored shaving cream. I've used a lemony flavored and citrusy flavored cologne. And now I'm gonna finish off my preparation on the skin with a couple of squirts of this lovely aftershave balm, which I'm just gonna row into the skin. Oh yeah, and that lime flavor, it's really zesty and uh, enjoyable. And there we go. I'm just going to rub that in. Now that'll absorb quickly into the skin. It'll help the skin recover from 
um, its trials and tribulations of having a razor blade drawn over it and you will feel soft and baby fresh oh, and that beautiful citrus lime smell is now layered with the other citrus smells fragrances I've used on the other products today and it just feels wonderful and there we are now that's taken me a check my clock 25 minutes to explain shaving and slowly shave in front of the camera on a morning when I'm doing this on my own with uh, with no audience it'll take five minutes but that regime set me up for the day I feel great the skin feels great it looks great it doesn't cost a load of money it's a lot cheaper than using a cartridge razor and uh, it's just such an important skill to have you'll never go back to using a cartridge razor if you take the time and effort to master the double-edged safety razor this one was only 10 pounds i will link to it in the description box below wherever you are in the world you'll be able to pick these up wilkinson sword uh, old heritage uh, originally a British company uh, making swords and guns in fact um, I don't know who owns them today they're probably part of some much larger conglomerate but that is an excellent starter razor it's not too aggressive so when you look to buy double-edged razors you find them referred to as mild or aggressive uh, aggressive would mean there's a more of an angle on the on the blade sticking out from the razor and that's probably for more experienced shavers whereas a mild blade like that one ideal for anybody, great for people learning um, shaving. So I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today on using a wet shaver. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. And when you're thumbing me up, why don't you click the subscribe button as well? You will not miss any of our future material. And I aim to do a number more for shaving videos in the future because you know I think it's a skill I really enjoy and I like sharing the experience with you guys as well. So, uh, and, and please leave me a comment in the comment section below. It'll be great to interact with you as well. So until the next time we meet in the Chaps Guide, take care, look after yourselves, be safe. <laughs>